So building from where we were in the previous tutorial, we've added our player health system with the health component, which is, if we just uh, recap, is displaying at the top over here and taking damage when we are on this pain provider. So we're gonna extend this now and we're gonna make our health widget. So all of this will be, like I mentioned previously in Blueprint, but I just wanted to show how we can use the variables from a C++ updated class to work with a fully Blueprint based widget blueprint. And this is because, like I've mentioned, there are some things which just really work much better with blueprints than they do C++. And the amount of time that it would take to pass references and things from a C++ parent class of a widget just generally isn't worthwhile. I will be going over some good practices for widget blueprints though, as there's still some kind of uh, questionable approaches that I still see even today. So what we're gonna do inside of our blueprints folder, um, I'm actually gonna create a whole new folder for this one and I'm gonna call this one uh, widgets. And I'm just gonna drop the crosshair into the widgets folder and I'm going to create our HUD widget as well. So uh, we'll add a new user interface, we'll call this one WBP underscore HUD. Now I could have made this a standalone health bar, but just in case we do want to add to this any point in the future, uh, we'll have this available to add things like score, ammo, depending on where this goes. So if we drag this over, what we want to do is I'm just gonna change the screen size on this one and I'll make this a 21.5 to 24 inch monitor, which is our 1920 by 1080, just so that we've got the correct ratio going here. And the first thing we're gonna want is to drag in our progress bar. So I'm just gonna do the visual stuff first of all. I want to make sure that this is anchored in the center. We want an alignment down here of 0.5 and 0.5. This just means that if we zero the position out on the X and the Y, this will be exactly in the middle of the canvas. Whereas if we leave this at zero and zero, then we get a kind of offset down here uh, because it's aligned to the top left corner of the component. So next, I'm just gonna drag this into place where I actually want it so that we can get the override on the position X and Y. And we'll just put this down to minus 800 and we'll say minus 400 on the Y. And then if we do a similar thing, we're just gonna drag this out to get the kind of size that we want for the health component. Um, and in fact, that could be done with moving up a little bit. Okay, so the next thing is, I just want to get rid of this gradient that comes by default with the Unreal style. So I'm gonna go and drop down the style, get the background image. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop down the image. We're gonna to go to a view options and we're going to show the engine content, which will give us some extra options. And the thing I want from here is a square texture. So just a nice standard white square texture. And we can see that that's tidied that up and got rid of the gradient. And if we scrub along the percent, which is the amount that this fills, we can see that it still has the gradient and uh, doesn't quite reach the edges now for the fill. So I'm gonna to go to the fill style as well. And I'm just gonna choose the same square texture. Okay, so that's now looking a little bit cleaner, a little bit more modern and quite nice. So you can also come in and do things as well if you wanted like changing the color. So we can see down here, we've got the fill color and opacity. Uh, make this a green, cause that's a fairly standard color for health. And uh, that scraping noise in the background is the new puppy trying to destroy my door. So apologies for her. Uh, the final things we want to do then. Now, first of all, before we actually implement this, I want to show the way that I still see people doing this. And this is something that you should really try to avoid in uh, widgets or pretty much anywhere. Um, and that is binding the percentage, which is what, like I said, we're going to use to fill the health bar or deplete the health bar. Uh, and people bind this to a function. And I'm just gonna show you quickly why we don't do this. Um, so if we create a binding here, this is a fairly standard way they used to show you how to do this in the early tutorials. Um, and I have heard as well that uh, the person who implemented this actually said they kind of regret doing it. It was a bit of a debugger developer thing, I think, that they left in because it was useful. Uh, they didn't appreciate that people would be using it constantly. So if we give this a binding, uh, we can return the value zero. For now, that's fine. What I want to show you though is if we come back in and we implement this into our character. So we're gonna go to Blueprints. We're going to go back to the character class. And on event begin play, I'm gonna create our widget. So I'm gonna get rid of this print string. Uh, we're gonna create widget. So just after the crosshair, and we want to add in the HUD, promote this to a variable, and I'll call this one the HUD ref. Once we've got the HUD ref, we want to add this to viewport. And that is the setup done just to get this uh, visible at the moment. So we're gonna do that first of all. And if we press play, we can see that we now have an empty health bar. So that's fine. Um, I'm just gonna run this in a play and editor. 
just so that we can see where this would actually appear properly in a game because obviously we've got a kind of skewed viewport scaling here. So that's fine, so that's showing. But what I want to point out is that if we come back in here now, if we drag off of this in the HUD blueprint and do a print string, and we just leave that saying hello, we're gonna get a big list of this now. Now this is essentially uh, the reason we can see so many of these print strings. This is like doing something on tick. This is running constantly. And if you think about this, the way that the health is gonna work most of the time, the health should probably be staying at a certain value. So we don't need to constantly check, is it still 90, is it still 90, is it still 90? We can just assume it's still 90. What we want to do is add a call in the character class that whenever the health changes, that we update the health to then check, or that we update the HUD to then check for the health. If you can avoid it, and I think most of the time you can avoid it, just avoid using the bind effect. So all of these have the option to bind something. Uh, and imagine if you do that for everything, if you've got a binding for the health, for the fill opacity, for the scaling, uh, if, if you bind everything that gives you that option, you're gonna have all of these running essentially tick events, constantly looping through the logic just to check if something's changed, we don't need that. So I'm gonna delete this function. I'm gonna come in and set the uh, binding back to none, which is fine, so remove binding. Uh, when it said none, then that would have caused an issue if we left that, so make sure that you actually remove the binding. And we'll just compile to make sure that function's gone. So what we want to do, the proper way to do this, we're gonna come in, create a new function, and we'll call this one update health. Okay, and quite simply, before we even put any logic in here, we now have this function. So we can go back to the character class. We already have our health changed event or any damage. So whenever we get any damage, rather than printing the string now, what we want to do is pass in to the HUD reference a call to update health. Okay, so nice and simple. That is now just going to get fired off just the once when the player actually takes damage. Um, or obviously we'd want to do this on a health change as well if you're getting a pickup health. Uh, but it's just going to happen that once when it's relevant that something's happened to the health value. Okay, so with that in place, the next few steps, we're going to go back to the HUD once more. Very simple function we want to add here. So we want to get the progress bar, which just for cleanliness, uh, in case we build on this in the future, will make this make a little bit more sense by renaming the progress bar to uh, progress health bar. Uh, naming convention there that I've got is uh, prog for progress. So we know that this is a progress component or a progress bar. If we were using buttons or text, then it'd be button okay text okay again just so you know that it is the text component with the word okay in it and for that kind of convention and if we go back to the graph this one i say progress bar we'll control drag this in and we want to set the percent okay so this is the same as what the binding was doing but again this is only going to happen once so we're now setting the percent when this function gets called uh, and what i want to do is I actually want to add two inputs to our health function and they're going to be floats so i'm going to pull off of the percent and i'm just going to drag that in twice just a nice quick way to get these float variables and then we can rename them over here and i'm going to call the first one default health uh, in fact now i'm going to call the first one health because we're doing a division this will just stop any uh, overlapping wires and the second one will be default health and basically the percent that we want to show is going to be the health divided by the default health like so. So like I mentioned, to avoid overlapping wires, just think of the way that you're declaring these. And then we'll plug that into the percent. We'll hit compile, hit save, and that is our health component done, or the health part of the widget done for our HUD. Now back in the character, of course, this is going to update with the new inputs. Uh, and the inputs are very simple. So we know that by the time that this has been called, we've already done the delegate call to our own health function. So the health has been updated which means we don't actually need to worry about the damage. What we want to do is get the health component. We want to get our health value, so the current health value now, and we want to get our default health, so the maximum that we can have. And of course, we're gonna plug the health into health and default health into default. We can hit compile there, hit save. And now what we should get is the health showing correctly. So one thing that I forgot to do is to actually start this off at a full value. So we set this to like 0.7, so I can drag that up to one. Now the other thing, if you want to be doubly sure that this works, is of course to just copy all of this and do the same thing as soon as you create the widget, just do a quick update to uh, fix the health just there. Okay, so if we hit compile and save, that means that even if we forgot to do this in the widget, if we left this at zero to begin with, as soon as the widget's created here, it's also going to do a call to update the health. We can press play and we should start with 100 health. Now if we move off of the pain provider, come back on, we should see this slowly going down every second that we get damaged by the pain provider until we get to zero health and then we're going to have an empty bar. 
So we can see quite quickly that is very simple and fast to implement. I've spent a little bit extra time just to uh, demonstrate how to correctly set up a widget. Like I mentioned, I still see some kind of off-ish implementation of widgets. And I just wanted to spend that extra time to actually explain why we should avoid using bind, what it's doing, and give a bit more of a visual representation of the fact it's constantly updating. Now we can also see that we're getting a HUD ref issue uh, saying that it's unable to read property HUD ref. So I think we're obviously setting the reference before calling the health value here. I think what's happening is because we're probably spawning in on the pain provider, this is probably trying to get called before the reference exists. So I'm just going to grab this. We'll say is valid. Uh, if this is valid, then we will execute this function. Uh, it just means that we're not trying to get a function on a referenced class that doesn't yet exist. So if we press play, there we go. We can see that that didn't happen that time. So that's all it was. Uh, that shouldn't really be a problem in most games, unless for some reason you are spawning your character purposely inside of a pain volume. The easier way is just to move the start component uh, and then walk over to it properly. So that is the health component wrapped up. Uh, like I said, just wanted to show a slightly more efficient way of implementing this. So again, take slightly longer than what you might have seen elsewhere because we've created this function uh, ourselves. But it does mean performance wise, one thing I haven't shown is that this will only print just that once. Uh, it's kind of obvious because the bar wasn't moving, but of course we did the previous test with the print string. So we'll just come back in and we can see we're just getting one call to hello. It's not taking up the whole screen and it's only happening when that function is actually needed. So if that were done, I'll leave this video here for today. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, please do leave a like and share the video around, that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.